Hey guys, in this video I plan to help you solve a fairly challenging relative motion problem. So this is our assembly just here, and we're asked to find the angular velocity of link BC, and also the velocity of the slider C. Don't forget that the velocity refers to both direction and magnitude. So this slider is forced to move in purely a horizontal direction. So the way you solve this is by first always analyzing the geometry. So let's draw our triangle that's formed by these links and sliders. It looks something like this. I'm not much of an artist, but it looks something like this. This right here is 40 degrees. This right here is 0 0.075 meters. This right here is 0 0.2 meters. And this right here is what's, what's been called gamma. And this is what I will call beta. We can solve for gamma by using the sine rule. We know that sine of gamma divided by its corresponding opposite distance, which is 0 0.075, is going to be equal to sine of 40 divided by its opposite distance, which is 0 0.2. You can solve for gamma using your calculator, and that leaves you with gamma is going to be equal to 13.9 degrees. There we go. We can also solve for beta. We know that the sum of the angles inside this triangle adds to 180, so we can say 180 is going to be equal to uh, 40 plus beta plus gamma, right? Which means that beta must be equal to 126.1 degrees. It's always a good idea to solve for these angles, even if they mightn't be used. I think it's generally a good step. Now let's see if we can start solving this problem using relative motion formulas. I'm going to start solving this problem by viewing link AB first. I think that'll be the easiest because we know the most amount of information about it. Let's start off with um, a relative motion formula. We know that the velocity of B relative to A is going to be equal to the velocity of B minus the velocity of A. Right? In this particular case, the velocity of A is going to be equal to zero. Right? That's because this pin isn't moving anywhere. So we can rewrite this out now, saying that the velocity of B is going to be equal to the velocity of B relative to A, right? Now, what is the velocity of B relative to A? In order to think about this, let's first view what point B, what path point B swoops out relative to point A. You'd notice it views out a circular path, right? You'd notice that relative to point A, B will swoop out a circular path. Which means then that its velocity will be tangential to that circular path from circular motion formulas, which I've covered in previous videos, which means that VB, VB relative to A, must be uh, tangential to the circular path. Which means then that we can write VB relative to A as R omega from circular motion, right? Where in this context, R is going to be 75 millimeters, which is 0 0.075 meters, and omega is going to be omega AB, which is 2,000 revolutions per minute, or if you like, 2 pi on 60 times 2,000 radians per second. You plug that into your calculator, and you'll be left with VB must be equal to 15.71 meters per second. Is that all we know? Don't forget that VB is both a direction and a magnitude. So we know its direction, it's here. We know the magnitude, so let's combine them together. It looks like this. It looks like this. This is going to be the direction of velocity of B, just here. Now, we also know the angle it makes by deconstructing this imaginary line par uh, parallel to um, this link just here. And we know this is 40 degrees just here because this is 40 degrees, which means we can construct an imaginary vertical line here and say this is 50 degrees, which means that we know this angle here is 40 degrees. I hope that makes sense. Now that we've found VB, let's now find the velocity of C. We, we don't know enough yet to find the velocity of C, but we do know its direction. We do know the direction of VC must be to the right. We know it's constrained to move horizontally, and we know it must be to the right, because mainly because it's common sense. You know AB is moving down, C needs to get out of the way, that means VC is to the right. There's no maths that's needed to be used to prove this. It's totally fine to state that, which means that VC 
must be equal to something, some magnitude, to the right. Okay. Now that we know the velocity of C, or as much as we can right now, and the velocity of B, let's invoke another relative motion formula. We know that the velocity of C relative to B is going to be equal to the velocity of C minus the velocity of B. And let's rearrange this to make this a little bit more friendly. We could say that the velocity of C relative to B must plus, plus the velocity of B must be equal to the velocity of C. This is a formula we're going to use now. In order to do this, let's first figure out what direction the velocity of C relative to B is. To do that, let's imagine you're sitting on point B and you're viewing C move out its complicated path. You'd notice the bar doesn't move or like translate. You'd notice it would just rotate about your position. That's because this length is constant. Pause the video and, and really convince yourself that this is true. If you're sitting on point B, you could only view C rotating. Right? So that means that the path C moves relative to point B must, in fact, be circular, like this. And because BC must be rotating um, to, to, to get out of the way of AB, that means you can tell that the velocity, let me draw it up here, the velocity of C relative to B must be up here, tangential to the circular path. So this is going to be the velocity of C relative to B, right? I hope that makes sense, where this, of course, is a right angle. So let's, let's draw this vector underneath this. We know it actually looks like this, presto. Do we know anything else? Well, we don't know its magnitude yet, but we do know its direction. We know that if we construct an imaginary horizontal line here and construct its perpendicular line just here, we know that this angle formed is gamma. We know this is a right angle, which means that we know this angle here is 90 minus gamma, right? Which means then this angle must be equal to gamma. Now let's draw VB underneath its vector. In fact, let me make a little bit more space. This is going to be VCB plus VB must be equal to must be equal to VC. Just make a little bit more space so I can draw the, the vector underneath their corresponding term. VB is going to be downwards at some angle. And in fact, that angle is going to be 40 degrees, as we just discussed. This angle here is going to be 40 degrees. And we know from trigonometry that this right here is going to be 50 degrees. And VC, much easier to draw, presto, just a straight line. So now let's analyze this expression using a graphical method. We know that the sum of these two vectors must be equal to this vector. So let's, let's draw that graphically. We know that this green vector plus this blue vector must equal to this red vector. I hope that makes sense. And let's fill in their corresponding geometry. We know this right here is 90 minus gamma. I'll write that in as 90 minus gamma. I'll evaluate it later. We know this angle here is going to be 40 and gamma, and we know that this angle here is going to be 50 degrees, just there. Likewise, let's <clears throat> write down their corresponding uh, terms. This is going to be VB. This is going to be VC relative to B. And this right here is going to be VC. OK, we're ready to start solving for this. Let me first redraw this triangle just to the right, showing just the magnitudes and angles. So I'm just going to be focusing on the magnitudes here. This right here is going to be VC. Let me draw it in red. Don't want to confuse you. This is going to be VC. This right here is going to be VB. This right here is going to be VC relative to B. So I'm just drawing their magnitudes at this point. And this angle is 90 minus gamma, which is 19 minus, what did I say, 13.9, which is going to be 76.1. And this angle here is gamma plus 40, which is 13.9 plus 40 which is 50, 53.9, 53.9. I hope you can read that. It's 53.9. And this right here is 50 degrees. OK, we can use trigonometry now to solve for this. We notice that the sine rule is once again really helpful. We could say, let me just make some space up here. 
let me try and block this off try and block this off we can make some space in here and say that sine sine of 76.1 divided by VB that's using this triangle is going to be equal to is going to be equal to sine of 53.9 divided by VC right that's just using the sine rule in this triangle which means then that VC must be equal to must be equal to um, 13.08 meters per second purely to the right right so we found the magnitude of it and then we just add the direction because we already know it's to the right and presto we have VC I hope that's what you got now let's find the velocity of VC relative to B I know that's not what we're asked to find here but you'll you'll find out that that will be really helpful let's also use the sine rule we know that <clears throat> we know that sine sine of 50 divided by VC relative to B is going to be equal to sine of 76.1 divided by VB which means when you plug that into your calculator VB VB is going to be equal to sorry VC relative to B VC relative to B must be equal to um, 12.4 meters per second and of course we know that it's in this direction just here so that's the velocity of VC relative to B that wasn't necessary to find or at least so it seems so but we can use this now to find the angular velocity of link BC I think you'd agree with me that this link must be in a counterclockwise direction let me draw a darker color so you can see that it must be in a counterclockwise direction like this this is angular velocity of BC that's the angular velocity of this link but what is its angular velocity what's the magnitude well we know that the link BC um, has, has an angular velocity and that's given by this expression we know that VC relative to B let's do the magnitude of it is going to be equal to R omega right so imagine if you're sitting on point B VCB is its velocity which means that we can find its angular velocity by plugging in R and omega which in this context is 0.2 times by omega BC right and we can solve for this we can say 12.4 is equal to 0.2 times by omega BC and we're left with omega BC must be equal to 62 radians per second and of course we know it's in this direction from common sense I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense.